I congratulate the noble Viscount Lord Astor for um, securing this debate uh, and uh, I think it's an issue of much greater importance than the sparse attendance might imply and one that's growing in importance. Uh, I have no interest to declare in electronic cigarettes. I dislike smoking, I've never done it uh, and I've only once tried a puff on an e-cigarette and it did, did nothing for me. Um, I'm interested in this issue as a counterproductive application of the precautionary principle. And I would like to say that I'm indebted to Ian Gregory of Centaurus Communications for some of the facts and figures that I'm going to quote shortly. There are at the moment about one million people in this country who are using electronic cigarettes. There's, an, there's been an eight-fold increase in the last year in the number of people using them to, to try to quit smoking. Already 15% of ex-smokers have tried them uh, and they have overtaken nicotine patches and other approaches to become the top method of quitting in a very short time. The majority of those who use electronic cigarettes to try to quit smoking are saying that they are successful. So here we have a technology that is clearly saving lives on a huge scale. I mean, if only 10% of the 1 million users in the country are successful in quitting, then that would save £7 billion, uh, according to the Department of Health figures, which were given in answer to my written question last month, that the health benefits of each quit attempt are about £74,000. And in that answer, the Minister said that a policy of licensing electronic cigarettes would have to create very few additional successful quit attempts for the benefit to justify the cost of licensing. But my lords, who thinks that licensing will create extra quit attempts? By adding to the cost of electronic cigarettes, by reducing advertising, by unglamorizing them, it's far more likely that licensing will create fewer quit attempts. So would my noble friend the Minister therefore confirm that by the same token, a policy of licensing electronic cigarettes would have to reduce quit attempts by a very small number for that policy to be a mistake. Now, nicotine patches are used to reduce uh, smoking as well, and they have been medicinally regulated, but they have shown extraordinarily little innovation and very low take-up over the years. So does my noble friend the Minister agree with the report by Professor Peter Hayek in The Lancet earlier this year, which said that the 30-year failure of nicotine patches demonstrated how the expenses and delays of medicinal regulation can stifle innovation. Does the, my noble friend the Minister also agree with analysts from Wells Fargo who said this month that if electronic cigarette innovation is stifled, this could dramatically slow conversion from combustible cigarettes? My Lords, I think we should try a thought experiment. Let's divide the country in two. Uh, in one half, let's call it East Germany for the sake of argument, we will regulate them as medicines uh, ban their use in public places, restrict advertising, ban the sale of refillable versions, ban the sale of electronic cigarettes stronger than 20 milligrams per milliliter. In the other half, which we'll call the West, we leave them as consumer products, properly regulated as such, allow them to be advertised as glamorous, allow them on trains, in pubs, uh, allow the sale of refills, allow the sale of flavoured ones perhaps, uh, and allow stronger products. In which of these two parts of the country would smoking fall fastest? It's blindingly obvious that the East would see higher prices, and prices are a serious deterrent to smoke quit attempts because many, many of the people who smoke uh, are, um, on average, poorer than the average. We'd see less product innovation. We'd sl see slower growth of electronic cigarette use and more people going back to real cigarettes because of their inability to get hold of the type and flavour and strength that they wanted. So there would be more people quitting in the western half of the country. But what are the drawbacks of such a policy? Well, there's a risk of harm from electronic cigarettes, as we've heard. How big is that risk? Noble Lord, the Minister confirmed to me in a written answer earlier this year that the best evidence suggests that they are 1,000 times less dangerous than cigarettes. Um, and the uh, MHRA impact assessment um, says that the decision on whether to regulate them should be based on the harm they do. And yet that very impact statement says... And I quote, that any risk is likely to be very small, that there is an absence of empirical evidence, that there is no direct clinical evidence, that the picture is unclear, and my favourite quote, unfortunately we have no evidence. Unfortunately there is no evidence of harm. There's said to be a risk of children taking up electronic cigarettes, then turning to real cigarettes. 
Well, just think about this for a second. For every child who goes from cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, there would have to be a thousand going the other way from electronic cigarettes to cigarettes for this to do net harm. And the, the evidence suggests, as my noble friend Lord Boric has said, that the gateway is the other way. 20% uh, of 15-year-olds smoke at the moment, and evidence from both ASH and from a study in Oklahoma suggests that there is strong evidence that the young people, when they use electronic cigarettes, are using them to quit, just like um, uh, adults do. So if we are to take a precautionary approach to the risks of nicotine, Will my noble friend, the Minister, consider regulating aubergines as medicines? Because they also contain nicotine. If you eat 10 grams of aubergines, which you easily could in a plateful of moussaka, uh, you will absorb the same amount of nicotine as if you had shared a room with a cigarette smoker for three hours. It's not an insignificant quantity. That's data from the New England Journal of Medicine, 1993. If we're worried about unknown and small risks, could my noble friend, the Minister, explain to me why, as Professor Hayek has put it, more dangerous chemicals such as bleach rely on packaging and common sense rather than medicinal licensing? There has been an approximately 8% fall in the use of tobacco in Europe in the last year. The tobacco companies are worried. A big part of that fall seems to be because of the rapid take-up of electronic cigarettes. They are facing their Kodak moment the moment when their whole technology is replaced by a rival technology that is, in this case, a thousand times safer. So does my noble friend, the Minister, think that there may be a connection between the rise of electronic cigarettes, the rapid decline in tobacco sales, and the enthusiasm of tobacco companies for medicinal regulation of electronic cigarettes? It's not just big tobacco, but big pharma has shown a significant interest in the, in the regulation of uh, electronic cigarettes, not surprisingly, because they are, again, a rival to their uh, patch products and other nicotine replacement therapies. Perhaps more surprisingly, a lot of the medical establishment in is in favour of this medicinal regulation. And I never thought I'd live to see the BMA and the tobacco industry on the same side of an argument. The BMA say that, they, that electronic cigarettes cannot be considered a lower-risk option. But this completely flies in the face of the evidence. As I said, we've heard already that they are 1,000 times safer. The BMA say they're worried about passive vaping. They say they're worried about the renormalizing of smoking and the use of electronic cigarettes as a gateway to smoking. Well, the excellent charity Sense About Science, to which I'm proud to be an advisor, has asked them for evidence to support these assertions. I must say there is, my lords, a strong suspicion that the only reason the medical establishment want to see these things regulated as medicines is because they cannot bear to see the commercial sector achieving more in a year in terms of getting people off cigarettes than the public sector has achieved in 10. So instead of talking about regulating this product, should we not be talking about encouraging it, promoting it, letting people vape indoors if they want, in pubs, on trains, in football grounds, specifically so that they are tempted to vape instead of smoke, because that would be an enormous benefit to them and to the country as a whole. So could I end perhaps by asking specifically in relation to the agreement that we, as we've heard from the noble Lord Lord Boric was agreed last night, um, what the impact of that will be uh, on what's happening and in particular uh, on the question of advertising. Um, because as I understand it under the agreement uh, last night, um, it will be possible for uh, uh, advertising of these things to be banned as if they were cigarettes. Um, what justification is that given proportionality and given the evidence that they are actually going to save lives rather than hurt them?